Hello, and welcome to Please Don't Send Me Into Outer Space, the podcast intent on exploring all that science fiction and fantasy has to offer one movie at a time. My name is Joel. My name is Sarah. My name is Aaron. The movie this week is The Midas Touch from 1997. Direct to video. I'm just looking, I'm looking at this IMDb. It says video December 30th, 1997, which probably means they don't have a clear date, but <laughs> straight to the VHS. Or, awesome. Or whatever. Anyways, directed by Peter Manugian. Written by Peter Fedorenko and Keith Estrada. Starring Trevor O'Brien, Ashley Tesoro, Joey Simonin, Simran, Simran. Man, I'm getting worse and worse at this as time goes on. And uh, yo, yeah, Willie, who played Willie? Dar- David Jeremiah. I assume Willie oh. is the, one of the two foils, right? I believe Cora, Cora would be his sister. Yeah, Marla Kodowski. Yeah, yeah, that looks like the guy. Yeah, that's him. Looks like he was uh, known for his work on Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, oh, Star Wars Episode One: Jedi Power Battles, Star Wars Episode One: Racer. He must have been a voice in Star Wars, dude. Yeah, let's see here. He played informant Craig Nabo, one of those things. Yeah, he's a voice actor. That's oh, cool. Oh, cool. Oh wow. Oh, Soul Caliber. Yeah, Lei Wulong, Street Fighter, Tekken Tag. Tekken? Play Grandpa? Well, now I feel bad, because we're definitely going to make fun of him during this thing. Well, you know, Joel, Mm. some people, you know, he just needs to be reminded of this moment in his life, Joel. If he ever finds our podcast, you know? It's a glorious moment. (laughs) This movie was selected by the randomizer, obviously. I don't think, I mean, there's no way any of us have heard of this movie before, right? Nope. This is a first for me. It fits into that blank check area, except for, I feel like those movies must have been earlier. It yeah. Might have been. Yeah, I felt like for a moment there when he was gonna um, step into a mysterious house in this movie that he was both gonna find a blank check, become the first kid president, and perhaps find a boombox that a genie will come out of. Oh, yeah. Simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Not to mention, end up as a kid in King Arthur's Court. Oh. Yeah, this was in the the time of the of the young boy in the position of power movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, totally. That's totally what we're experiencing. Richie Rich. Um, <laughs> <laughs> blank check, first kid. Uh, Little Big League, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm joking. I don't I don't think there were a rash of them, but there were a few. There was sure. a rash. Oh, it was a thing for it sure. A, yeah. There was an entire show about them called Home Improvement. No, I, I just this kid's got the same haircut as all those kids. Dun, dun, the, the Jonathan Taylor Thomas cut? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's good. good look for... It was the time. The 90s. The 90s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this kid didn't fit, though. He didn't have a skateboard. He, was, he had a bicycle. It's all about bikes. Well, you know, th- this movie definitely focused on the fact that, that a kid, a kid's uh, most desired object was a sick bike. Yeah. yeah. Or you know, that was an important part of being a kid in the 90s. Also, possibly a new heart for his grandmother. Well, yeah, no, Billy Bright is not a bad kid, right. as we find out, right? It's not a bad no, kid. he's a good kid. He, he's got his priorities straight. Does his schoolwork, takes care of grandma, uh, complains a lot. Oh, wait. Dreams about some sort of big-haired model lady giving him a shirtless massage <laughs> in his While mansion. he plays video games. <laughs> and rides a motorcycle through his house. He's obviously got problem relationships with adults, so him getting a massage from this, this lovely oh, young God. Romanian lady in the beginning. Oh, know. yeah. Where was this filmed again, Joel? Uh, Sarah found out it was oh. filmed almost exclusively in Romania. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. I just saw some of the kids talking, and I was like, hmm, I think this might be, like, 
somewhere else other than America. Just just some special dubbing, that's all, you know? Yeah, they did tons of, like, over uh, recording that they that they synced up with people talking, so it kind of didn't really seem that weird because everybody sounded that way, but some of the actors sounded a little bit... Right. English as a second language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And right. they, yeah, like I assume they dubbed over the people that didn't fit over. Like there were the security guards at the end. I don't even know if those guys were security guards. They're just oh, are you talking about the doofuses that were just hanging out in the water treatment? Yeah, plant? they were sitting in a shack. <laughs> <laughs> the way I, that guy was sitting by the window, I was like, "There's a toilet right there." <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, he just hangs out by the window. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, Joel. Maybe there is a toilet in there. No, they filmed the inside too. Yeah, they tried to make it look like they were inside. Of oh, I checked. Thing. This guy was not pooping. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> no. I meant like Joel's maybe poop the, watch. Maybe that it was just exterior of that building, and he was sitting on the toilet. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 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 Not necessarily that he was going to the bathroom, but that was the only place to sit down in the room. Yeah. Well, that's the uh, the perfect guard. So you never have to leave your station if there's a bathroom right there, right? You know, you keep and watch all the time out the window. We've already skipped to the end. That's that's the way the movie ends. We find two two homeless people in a shack <laughs> pooping at a, at a sewage treatment plant. <laughs> I mean, do you want to explain what happens in the movie since nobody has probably ever seen this? Well, we all know the legend of King Midas, right? But uh, let's let's re-explain this here. Aaron, you seem to know most of, of what was going on there because Sarah had some questions and you were just like, oh, no, no, let me tell you all about this. Well, I mean, I, I can't say I know it word for word verbatim, but of course, King Midas, he, uh, he desired gold. Go- gold? gold, solid gold. Go. Uh, in fact, in fact, I believe his touch could turn things to gold, Joel. But the problem was, is that uh, uh, it, it got a little, it got a little overboard, mm. got a little too out of hand, and uh, I think, I, I believe, as the legend ends, he turns into solid gold. Pretty sure. I don't remember how it ends. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm fairly certain it's one of those disastrous tales where, you know, he just... The moral of the story Yeah, I, I remember. Don't be greedy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, when he can't eat anymore, he's, like, starving to death because he's turning everything Everything gold. turns to gold. And then he, like, kisses his prin- his favorite daughter, his princess, on the cheek, and she ends up turning to gold, and, he, you know, that ruins it for him. Yep. And then, like, the children's version is like, oh, you've learned that greed is not the way, haven't you? Well, you can cure yourself by... Worshipping me as your new god. Wait. If he if he had wished for okay, do you want to talk about that first? No, 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 no. What? If he'd wished for a goose that laid golden eggs, he wouldn't be in a situation where he had to like think about it later. That's like, true. It'd be like if you wished for a goose. Now you've got to take all the <laughs> stuff that comes with being a goose owner. You got to clean up after it. Make sure it has a pond. You gotta feed that yeah. goose. This goose needs special goose food. Did you really want that goose that laid the golden egg? And I, you know, if anyone's nearby and been near a pond where geese hang out, that place smells terrible. So he, he just didn't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. There's, um, that's a lesson. This is totally already derailing the podcast, but I, I need to mention this <laughs> no, comic okay. book. It is insane. There's this comic book called uh, The Midas Flesh. Is what it's called. Oh, cool. And it came out from Boom Studios. It's like one of those all ages stories. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this cover shows what appears to be a Velociraptor in an astronaut helmet. Do you know why that is? Because it's. A- because a somebody got a. Somebody got a touch that whenever they touch something, it turned into a Velociraptor. That would be an even more amazing story. But the, the story is about how uh, essentially the Midas tale occurs, but what happens is, is Midas unfortunately turns the entire planet into gold. Life and the universe evolves to the point where raptors are from a different oh, planet wow. come to Earth and find the planet uh, made oh of solid gold. Gosh. It is one of the best comic books from Boom Studios I've ever read. That's so I just cool. wanted to share that with you guys. It's Thank amazing. You. If you guys oh, ever happen awesome. to run into that one. The Midas Flesh. Yeah, uh, we should have just read that comic instead of watching this movie. Yeah, so- sorry to drop that no, bomb no, too early in the pod here. No, that's Sometimes all right. Sometimes we forget if we don't mention it when it comes up. Yeah, yeah just had it. to. I get it. Yeah, if you guys got a got a tangent that you got to get on, just stick your hand out. Like, here we go. 
we've been doing this for more than two years. I think this is the time where we could establish. <laughs> you want you want you want to you want to establish like establish a, a series of hand, uh, hand gestures. I mean, the reason we haven't done that is because I've seen you knock into things that yeah. weren't even near you. So it's not yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty obnoxiously awkward. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very awkward and in, in knocking into things, just not when it comes to the podcasting. You know, I get up to get something from that's the kitchen, my job, Joel. You've got it covered there. Mm. I got it covered here. We should just re- pretend we're recording a podcast all the time. That's yeah. true. That's yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I wear that headset on all the time. There we go. <laughs> Wake up in the morning. Hi, my name's Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not going to make any sounds. Hello, and you. welcome to the morning. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so the Midas touch. It's a, it's about Billy. Billy Bright. His, he lives with his grandmother. His parents are dead. Although we don't know, we don't really get any acknowledgement of that, except for he looks at a picture one time and he's like, "I wish you were still here." And uh, things aren't going so well for Billy. His uh, grandma and he, uh, she used to own part of a grocery store, but now she had to sell it to her partner because she's just not doing well with uh, health problems. She's she's got a heart problem. And they can't really afford to get her a pacemaker or, or a transplant or whatever else she needs. It, in fact, it, it seems like the only income they're getting is from Billy's paper route. And I don't know what they pay paper, you know, delivery boys in Romania, but I don't think it's going to cover what they need. <laughs> well, it definitely showed It showed by the, the weird green goop that Billy was cooking uh, Grandma. That's traditional Romanian food. It's oh, not- <laughs> excuse me. But I'm assuming that was supposed to be like liquid poverty. Listen, if we have any, if we have any, <laughs> if we have any listeners in Romania, I apologize. I just, I just want to put that right out. I haven't been able to. I haven't checked our numbers in a while, so I don't see you know outside of the states uh, who's listening anymore. It's usually Great Britain or China. Well, yeah, we got cool fans in China, right? Mm-hmm. We got cool fans everywhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're right. Yeah, thank you, Sarah. We have correction, we have. Aaron. You're all cool. Thank you for listening. Yeah. No. I thought that that's that stew or whatever he was making. It looked kind of green, didn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. It, and the ladle was like as big as the pot that he was <laughs> like, it, like it had the long kitchen handle. That's a traditional Romanian spoon. I I, I, <laughs> is it for beaten holes with? Yeah. <laughs> that's for storming the castle. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of castles in this movie, so it makes sense. I mean. <laughs> did you say, did we already say that, like, the dream sequence in the beginning is, like, a totally misleading, like, just kidding? Well, we, we didn't get that far. I only described the, the awkward massage scene, but uh, there was definitely some. But the lead up to that was really was interesting. Weird, yeah. yeah. If this had been a true 90s movie, what would have happened was the camp. The the way the camera does it, it's like Evil Dead style going through this huge yeah, property yeah. <laughs> while while rock music is playing. <laughs> it, it already kind of takes you off the rails because yeah yeah the camera's just going straight through the bushes yeah. like straight up you know like the Sam Raimi style. Coming a to get creature you. is on its way through the bushes. Yeah, so, I don't think I've ever had a dream start like that. That dragon that loves gold. Yeah, no. Uh, so if it was a true '90s movie, we would have gone into the house. Old, uh, you know, the butler bringing something to him. He's get the massage, and he would have been like, "Oh, thanks, Rachel. That was wonderful." And then he would have sat up on the table, taking off his sunglasses, and been like, "I bet you're wondering how I got here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a heck totally. of a story. No, I was thinking it would be like, like maybe they did all that, and then like did like a voiceover, like. Yeah, right. This isn't how my life is. Sure. I'm poor. Like, right. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely afford the, afford the gruel that I feed Grandma every morning. The dialogue of, between the butler and Billy in this dream sequence is great, though. I really like the, the fact that he's like, oh, sorry, Aerosmith won't be playing for you today. And I just like how he kind of shrugs and goes, that's fine. I just felt like, I felt like listening to some grunge anyways or oh, something yeah. like that. And then he's like, oh, do you want me to call Pearl Jam? And he says Jam Pearl. Yeah, he says Jam, Jam. Pearl. Would you like me to call Jam Pearl? <laughs> he's so square. Well, that's, I mean, that's all a dream sequence. He gets waking up when his boy, uh, the, the bully shows up and, uh. He's demanding his homework. This kid, this kid is a bully who happens to be his friend, 
which is, uh, I mean, I've, I've certainly seen that caricature before, but this guy is actually a real bully. I used to have some friends that were bullies. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Was Aaron one of them? <laughs> no. <laughs> you could tell me. I unfortunately wasn't acquainted with uh, Sarah until high school. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm talking about. It's not, I thought it was in high school. I thought you were like, hey, squirt. Uh, I, no, I, I was too busy like lighting my pants on fire in a uh, uh, welding class to consider the the the, voca- the vocational skill of bully. <laughs> lighting your pants on fire. Maybe girls will like me now. <laughs> Wait, that was a total wrong voice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but what, what do you guys think of this bully? I think I don't know where to begin. He's lame. He is pretty lame. Yeah. I mean, he, I get that their friend, the friendship click, like, grows through the adventure and stuff. Like, that's okay. Yeah, this kid <laughs> is kind of, like, the jerk that protects him from the other jerks in his school. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's his protection He's like an buddy. servant to him. Yeah. It's like the mafia. You pay him off, they protect you, supposedly, from other right, people. Right, right. Yeah, this, this guy's literally doing it. And we do. We see him protect him from some bullies. That I think we're going to kill this kid if he didn't give him 50 cents. So, <laughs> at least it was uh, good there. <laughs> they seemed like they were going to hurt him even though he did give them the money. And he had already been pushed down on the ground. Yeah, they wanted blood. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know I as a kid I remember experiencing some bullying, but nothing ever to this extent. So it was a little, it's always kind of one of those things where I'm like, oh man, that sucks. Like yeah. as far as like, like w- what you're seeing, can't really relate to it too much, but. You, you know. didn't have a Leon in your life, is what you're saying? Well, I, yeah, I never had a kid I had to copy his homework for, mm. so he wouldn't, you know, smash my teeth. Well, you weren't that kind of student anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think I would have had the skills to do his homework for him to begin with. Yeah, Kai, here's a copy of my homework. We're going to get straight C's together. Yeah, yeah. High I never, five. I never did someone else's homework for them, but I did have a friend that I had to eventually, like, just not talk to anymore because I realized that she was just, like, being really mean to me. Mm. And she'd send me on errands to go talk to boys she liked for her and stuff. Got and, it. Like, mm. Yeah. And then not I kind of cool. then I kind of realized that that's, like, because I'm a pretty open, nice person, and, like, I kind of had to... It's been an adjustment for me in life to kind of feel people out, because sometimes you run into people that are, like, opportunistic and will take advantage. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All throughout the rest of your life. Still learning. Still learning. <laughs> still learning that one myself, Sarah. No, unfortunately. You, yeah. You guys know. Mm. The You're other... Nice mm-hmm. Wait, what? The other character in this is Hannah, who I think is supposed to be starting out as kind of like a tomboy. She's, she's our like, baseball cap wearing all American girl, Joel. Yeah, she's the got a new girl bike. next door who's like, you know, your best bud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she's got a sick bike. Yeah. Because yeah. it's the 90s. Her parents and kids need your sick bikes. They went to Toys R Us and they're like, I'll take that one right now. And they're like, whoa. Our hero was pretty nice, but he was, he was like kind of shy too. He had to keep giving himself a pep talk, like "I can do this." And the girl was kind of a badass, like from the get go. She yeah. was like, "I'm not afraid of anybody. I'll like kick this bully's butt, like just whatever." She kind of reminded me of like Anna Chlumsky in the My Girl movies. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. oh yeah, but they, I mean, they were set in an earlier time period, but. Yeah. When I first saw her, I thought she might have been the girl from Jurassic Park oh, for yeah. just a moment. No, oh, they're, dr- they're dressed the same. Yeah. I was kind of like her when I was a kid, but I wasn't as uh, tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same here. Always a shorty. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> She's tall. I can say that much about her. Yeah. So, yes. Okay, so... The, we we get a setup pretty quick here. There is a house somewhere in this town that is is like a mansion. It's like Pyru Mansion. You know, all the everyone you know as you're driving by on the bus, you can see it on the mountainside. You know that place is haunted, and you've never been there. You don't even know what the story behind it is or anything like that. But it, you're pretty sure. 
I think most small town America has that, that, you know, creepy house. That house, you know? I mean, where's that in Ventura? Well, actually, Joel, yeah. I believe there is a series of haunted places in Ventura. In no, fact, I just, I, but in I fact there's a bookstore. There's a bookstore, uh, I think Bank of Books, that has a book that can tell you all about the paranormal spots mm-hmm. in your town of Ventura. That sounds lame. I just want to know where the mansion is. Oh. There's not one long, yeah, I don't know about like, that one. old building mansion on the hill or something. Well, how am I supposed to burn it down if I don't know where it is? Come on. Uh, I think the, the the oldest building in Ventura is going to go on a wild guess here is probably the mission. Yeah. Oh, okay. So burn the mission down. So there you go. There's some there's some Victorian houses on the hill, but they're like I don't know when they were built. They could be Victorian era. They could be newer than that. I'm not sure. There's creepy houses I can point out to you if you want. No, I just, <laughs> there's a creepy house. There's a creepy house. <laughs> The, I mean, this is like, this is Mr. Burns' mansion from The Simpsons. Like, it's got the gate, it's got a big old driveway, and then, you know, when they, they, get, they got no problem opening the gate and walk in to point at stuff, though, so. But that's, that's where we're gonna come back to in this movie. In fact, let's just skip ahead. This, okay. This okay. bully gets a, a fatal injury when the girl kicks him in the shin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely one that he's still walking off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he Absolutely. goes, he goes down to meet his punk friends. And they're like, we don't believe that you all got into a fight. If you're really tough, you go break into that house and steal the hourglass that's in the window. Everybody knows about this hourglass. Well, I believe I believe he tells the bulls that he got beat beat up by eight dudes. Yeah, eight college guys. College guys. Yeah, he put a couple <laughs> of them in the hospital, though. That's right. They they just didn't make it. No, <laughs> they're dead. They couldn't they couldn't stand up to his sick '90s haircut. Uh-huh. The hourglass is like the talk talk of the town. Everybody knows Everybody. about it. Yeah, that that hourglass is like you know, it's the MacGuffin of the movie because it has nothing to do with anything. It's just this object that it just makes me wonder how many how many kids go to this mansion, like how many how many people are are like hopping in this property. You know, what I mean? yeah. at least looking. Yeah, at least yeah. in the front gate thing. I don't know. And there was, like, so many cobwebs on it that it was, like, it was, <laughs> like, a, you know, like a, like a creep show, like, yeah. Halloween cobwebs decoration store <laughs> type. Yeah, she's got yeah, a totally. infestation problem, yeah. yeah. She needs to call John Goodman get him over there with his, his bug killer. I think that there may have been a couple writing, like, snafus. For the most part, I would say, like, the beats in the movie were all right until, like, the ending. But there was a part in the beginning where they were, like, him and his grandma were talking about the store and how she wished she had money for it. Yeah. And I was like, you know, that's not terribly ungraceful. They're kind no. of, you know, giving us some tidbits on the backstory of where these people are and stuff. And yeah. then, then he rides his bicycle by the store. Right. And they play it again for us right, right. over his, you know, thought process. Well, you, he remembers back to when she said that. That's the part that, that's like, we just learned that like two minutes ago. <laughs> hey, you, you guys have to remember, kids are stupid. They'll just forget, you know. It's, they're like goldfish. They just... Straight out, this is a kid's movie. Mm, mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't definitely. know if we've mentioned that yet. But. This would be in your VHS collection right next to all of your three ninjas uh, but it's VHSs. A, yeah, it's a 90s kid's movie, which means it's got some, some kind of weird, kind of creepy things going on there. Like, uh, I don't like Billy's relationship with his grandma. Grandma, first oh. of all, I'm not sure that grandma knew where she was. Like, uh, the actress, yeah, oh, I'm yeah. worried that she might have just... A little been, disoriented. <laughs> They they wouldn't give her her pills until she said she read her Yeah, off. and then there's a part where she's just kissing on his arm, and I'm just like, no. There, there's such a thing as a, a family affection, you know, a nice hug, maybe a kiss on the cheek. Uh, she's 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 doing like the full on uh, Adam's family. You spoke French thing going on. <laughs> when, I, when I was taking notes on her supporting cast, I wrote grandma with kissing grandson fetish. Yeah. <laughs> Kissing grandson <laughs> I got a real fetish for Chris and kissing grandsons. Oh my gosh. 
I don't know, like, I felt like he should have been like, what was your relationship with your grandmother like, Grandma? Like, yeah. this isn't really appropriate. I'm <laughs> I'm growing up. You're all mine now, Billy. <laughs> That's all that matters. It makes me wonder, though, like, at what age he started being raised by her. Yeah, I don't know. But that's not really a question I should be looking for the answer to in this movie. You know, the sequel never came out that explained, you know, how his parents parents were (laughs) secret gold miners or whatever. Uh, (laughs) Midas Touch 2. I want to hear the origin of the witch. Yeah, that's why there needs to be a Midas Touch 2 right there. She's the most interesting character. And her house has the most interesting special effects. Yeah, so so the bully has to get this hourglass, but instead of doing that, he's going to get Billy to do it. So he makes it, he, he, he like, he's like threatening Billy's life, I feel like, all the time. Yeah. But it's like, okay, go in there and get that hourglass or I'll kill you. Yeah. Like, oh, you're just joking, right? No, I want your blood on my fists and I'm going to get it. So he goes, yeah, Billy breaks into this old lady's house. After he looks in the window and he he sees yeah, this is the part he sees this the hourglass the and it's right next to this cat statue, <laughs> and then all of a sudden the hourglass just zoom animated disappears. Well, you see, and you it's see, like Joel, it, it shrinks to one dimension mm-hmm. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and then to a single point. So yeah. it's like Doctor Strange, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like wow, that's some real magic. And then the cat statue is like, yeah, that was real magic, kid. No, it was, uh, for some reason, the cat statue's eyeballs come to life and its mouth. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But the kid's not freaked out by this. He definitely saw that hourglass disappear. That that was the part where I was just like, yeah, this is when I turn around right then and there. I don't care. Bully, beat me up. (laughs) Beat me up. I just saw a stone statue. Excuse me. A stone cat statue w- wiggle its tongue at me. Yeah. In all of its 90s 3D CGI glory. Yeah. It, uh-uh. It looked me directly in the eyes and said, hello, baby. Uh-uh. Not going any further. Yeah. No, but he's brave. He's, he's, he's brave, dude. He's courageous, and he's got, uh, what is it? Charm. Confident. One of the two C's. Confident. Courage. Oh, he's confident, and he's he's got courage. Uh, yeah, so he finds another uh, door to get into in the back, and he goes into the house, and it's all creepy. There's spider webs and and things he's knocking over. He's a clumsy kid in general, so he's knocking things over. And uh, th- there's a lot of, like, this bit jokes. I-, I don't know how to describe it, like things that are... Well, just like explain the like, scenario. Explain the scenario, and then, and then th- therefore we can dissect it. Well, it's it's not just the kid... <laughs> Going into the house and be, it's, it's not as simple as, as a kid's movie could be. Cause he gets in the house and then, like I said, he like stumbles out some other things. You know what it reminds me of? I just remembered. I was trying to remember what that scene reminded me of. What's the movie where the guys break into that blind guy's house? Are you talking about the new one? The horror movie? The recent get movie? Out? Yeah. No, not get out. Uh, don't breathe. Don't breathe. Yeah. It's like they're breaking into the don't breathe house. This is not good. <laughs> yeah. Not good. <laughs> but no, anyways, good for you, kid. So like he knocks over. That's that's funny, right? And then he gets a little bit further in the house, and he gets to a place where it's like wooden floor, and he moves his fr- his foot forward, and it makes a squeak sound. He's trying to be quiet, so he's like, "Oh no!" So he takes his he he pulls his foot back, and he puts his other foot out into a different spot. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" You know, it's the joke, right? Yep. So it's it's just like these little little goofs, which. I do appreciate. They didn't make me laugh, but I do appreciate. There's some pretty fun sound effects in this movie too. Oh yeah, of uh, different different just cartoon wackadoodle noises that are happening. <laughs> and it's kind of one of those things where I wanted to take notes on it, but it would take too long to write the note as opposed to what was happening in front of me. Right. So I was like, oh, I'll just have to remember those like, noises. Like when the toast came out of the toaster and it was like smoke. <laughs> Like it was, everything was exaggerated. Like I over like my the toast top. burnt. Mm. <laughs> but I think, I think, like, yeah, like instead of just walking into the room, he's like tripping over stuff. There's like comedic, like over the top, like farcical type um, stuff. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, he gets in the big room, and there's a there's a chair that's turned its back is torn towards where he's going. 
And I'm pretty sure Dr. Claw is in it. But he, it turns out there's nothing in that chair when he passes by. But he sees the hourglass right next to the stairs. Next time, yes. And he starts heading towards it. He's about to reach for this hourglass. And then I think somebody says, Ah, oh, Billy Bright, I've been waiting for you. And then the cat statue just turns into a cat. Just full <laughs> life. Life. It was a cute Real gray. cat, yeah. A cute gray fluffy one, yeah, too. Yeah, very yeah. fluffy. Yeah. It was a fluff. I would probably think that cat was a friend, but I would also be like, why the heck is a statue turning mm. into a cat? I mean, after I cleaned the piss off the floor, I'd probably be like, <laughs> that cat's cute, and my piss. You know, yeah, no, so. I, I understood. Yeah, uh, not, not <laughs> where you're having the cat, your allegory. The cat's not being, don't worry. Um, or maybe the witch. The witch is being old. Part of me is trying to think what the advantages of making your pets turn to stone. Like, what part of being a witch is that like? I mean, other than to freak kids out. I'm trying to think. She was just showing off, I think. Like, here's some stuff I can do. If okay. You don't understand the gravity of, like, what's happening. Okay, fair enough. Fair <laughs> that, enough. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, she, was doing, she did that a couple of things. It was just like, she didn't have to do that. But Yeah. Is this when she turned Billy Bright into Captain Shazam? Yes, that's when it's like the power of, uh, what is it? Uh, the S stands for Spencer, or for Heather, or, uh... What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> the, na- the name Shazam, the, oh, the Captain right, Marvel from right. the DC Universe. The, those names all stand for gods. Um, Spencer's, uh, no, okay, anyways. Wasn't but, there, like, a gargoyle lion? That thing? happened a little bit that later happened, during oh, Leon. when he came back Sorry. to visit later. Oh, was it Leon, or, or no, it was, it was, it was when Billy, it was, Billy came Billy back. Billy came back okay. to say, I don't want the powers anymore. Spoiler. Uh-huh. Spoiler alert. Audience, I, I'm sorry. It turns out that when he does he get powers, powers, he's not very happy about it. Yeah. But yes, she's like, you came here. You were the bravest boy, and I've been waiting for you, and what do you want? He's like, oh, I want to get out of here. No, what do you really want? I really want to get out of here. No, no. But what do you want in your heart? I'd like to leave. He says it like five yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. She's like pushing him and he's like, really anything. Like, uh. Like, please don't kill wanna, me. Want to help my grandma? Want to, want to, you know, mm-hmm. get live? <laughs> want to, then he just eventually comes to the idea of money. Yeah. And he says he wishes he has the Midas touch because yeah. it's something his grandma has told him about. The Midas touch. He's ready. And uh, they they touch fingers E.T. style, and all of a sudden he's got these powers, and the first thing he does is... Doesn't he, like, get blown back and his hair goes all crazy? Oh, yeah. He gains super speed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he takes off, like, all, like, comic books. Yeah. Like, all, like, cartoony. Yep. Yep. He's scared. Uh, This is the beginning. There's some stuff before this, but it gets cartoony. Yeah. And we can skip around towards the middle. It's the setup that's important because you can't, you can't, a kid just can't have the Midas touch. That's ridiculous. You've got to have an origin story. Is it at this point where he gets a little bit of a CGI bit on his index finger? Right when the, right when he tells her what, what, you know, what he does want? I think so. The little psh, lens flare kind of thing. I mean, that's what he's getting the like special computer, right? effect. Yeah. When he touches things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And he touches a sprite can. I, I can't remember what the first thing he touches, though. Or well, it was mouse. baseball. Well, yeah, mouse, That's baseball right. cap. Mouse, baseball cap. And then he, he touches a sprite can to show his friends he could do this. Oh, so gra- that the gra- bully doesn't kill him. Grandma tries to get all up in his grill again, <laughs> but he's afraid because he doesn't want to turn her into gold. Gra- Grandma's like, did you wash your hands? Let me suck on your fingers, boy. And like, what the f- <laughs> Usually, Weirdo. usually when I'm watching something like this and Joel says something like that, I'm like, hey, come on now, whatever. And this time I was just like, no, yeah, like, Grandma, you're being creepy. <laughs> yeah, and at this moment I feel Billy was actually showing some true acting skills. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I want out of here. Oh, wow. <laughs> Get me away from Grandma. You're shivering. Are you scared? <laughs> yes, I am, Grandma. No, I was leaving. <laughs> I, I love my grandma, by the way. I don't. I just want. No, I want our listeners I to know. I'm not speaking too. about yeah. grandmas in general. Here. Sorry. I'm talking about the grandma the in this grandma movie. In this movie. <laughs> my, my grandmas are cool. Just saying. <laughs> I'm not afraid of them. 
I wonder if... I just want to establish that. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, I listened to your podcast. Are you scared of me? <laughs> no. Sadly, my grandmothers don't listen to this podcast, but I'm, I wish they did. Oh. Uh, is that the wish you would tell the witch? I, I, uh, yeah! I yeah. Is, if I was podcast. tripped... You know what? That actually should be our lesson. Should be what, what we what would we wish for. <laughs> All right, well, we'll remember at the end. Uh-huh. It's got to be something that will nef- definitely not go wrong. Yep. But yeah, okay. So he shows the his friends he could do this, and they're impressed. But the bully is right. On, you know, he's got the dollar signs in his eyes right away. Does the bully have a house? No, we never see the interior see- of his house. We see a tree house fort type thing. Yeah, he's got like a Bart Simpson tree house. Yeah. yeah that's where, that's where he lives. I'm wondering. With his dogs. <laughs> that's where he li- That's where he wears his army, his army uh, clothes. Because <laughs> he has a specific outfit that he wears when he's in the tree house. <laughs> but I guess if I had a tree, I, I honestly, I took note of this, but then I realized it was just envious because I never had a tree house growing up. It's weird that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird that. um... Maybe he's so rough because he doesn't have parents or something either. I don't. Yeah, know. he just might live in a tree. I was gonna say he's pretending he's like in the army or something as soon as he gets in there. And I, I haven't seen enough war movies to know which one I was gonna reference. But. It's definitely platoon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe Full Metal Jacket. That's what I was thinking. Of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, he lines up some gold stuff. They touch the gold stuff to make it gold, or it's not gold until he touches it. Just not, you know. It's like, here's a few objects. Yeah. Change them to gold. Yeah, but he gets some gold plated latinum. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, we'll go to a pawn shop. And Joel's, oh, he- Joel's here going, you can't, you stupid kids, you can't go to a pawn shop. They're not going to take, you You can't, you got to have a driver's license. Dirt, 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 Joel, it's a kid's movie. Yeah, I kind of. Well, hold on, Joel, because. They make that a point, because as they're walking into the pawn shop, there's a sign that says 18 or over. Mm-hmm. So that's why Leon decides to go in alone. Yeah, but that's because the pawn shop is full of pornography. It has nothing to do with the, having a license, or a license, driver's license. Oh, okay, Joel. That looked like there was just a bunch of old junk in there. I mean, before we go into <laughs> the pawn shop, we right. do get a look into the window of the pawn shop. Well, that's so we can establish are the owners of, of this establishment, right, Joel. Right. There's there's two older, you know, elderly people that very nice people that own this pawn shop, and they're they're more than willing to help out our our young people sell this gold. Right. They're very friendly, kind hearted. It, it's kind of a strange twist for this movie because it, you know it's it's incredibly boring. No, that's not what happens. No. Instead, we get somebody who thinks there's Chris Farley with a long mop wig on his head. And every time we see him, he's he's definitely eating something. He's he's he looks gross. He smells gross. I could smell him through the screen. He's stuffing spaghetti in his mouth or something when we first see him through the window, and it was like over the top. Like this is supposed to be cartoonish. I think he even like dirt on his face too. Yeah. Like in that very that first like opening shot of him <laughs> through the window, like he looked all like dirty. Just like, stuff spaghetti <laughs> into your mouth and chew with your mouth open. And that's what that's what we did in the nineties. Okay, make a stupid face. <laughs> make a stupid face. <laughs> Be <laughs> void of thought, as the director says to him. <laughs> and there's also there's also a la- there's also a lady stupid in this place. You know. And we thought it was his wife, but it turns out his sister. Yep. And they run this pawn shop, and they're like, hey, are you 18 to the bully? I'm like, why, why, why are you asking him that? Creepos. Okay, no, but, like, because you can't, you can't pawn nothing, and then this bully luckily has a fake ID. And these guys are idiots, so. It looks like they've never had a customer, ever. Oh, definitely not. You kidding me? I go in there. This guy's got stains on his shirt. <laughs> you want you want to trade in your stuff? He's like, sorry, we don't take Nintendo Power Mags. <laughs> they do take them. I just gotta take them for free because I love Nintendo Sega only. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> this is a Sega Genesis house. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Sonic rules. Sonic. Don't. Don't bring me something for a different console. <laughs> Speaking of Sonic, I'm going to eat these chili dogs. Right 
well, they they kind of swindle this kid. He, he turn he's he's get like four thousand dollars worth of gold stuff, and he they give him two hundred. But he he's a stupid kid. He doesn't know. They get it. He takes what he can get. I think he knows that at this point he wants cash for the gold that his friend quote unquote can make, and he's willing to take whatever cash he can get because he knows he's underage and stuff. Yeah, and if I could add to that, I just wanted to add that I think you're right that he just could get whatever he could get right at that point. But I feel it was because he he, he was like, oh, thank God, fake ID worked. Yeah. Even though they say my eyes are blue and my eyes are brown. Yeah. Or, didn't he have like a, like a eye patch? Eye patch on yeah. That? Yeah, the, eye patch and long hair. He has someone else's ID. Pennsylvania. Obviously isn't him. And they say it isn't him, and then he's just like, oh, I was wearing contact lenses when that was taken, and they're like, oh. So these become our foils throughout the movie, the, these two stupid pawn shop owners. They, they they got a real crappy car that they're they're going to follow these kids in. There's there's tons of, like, fat people who are so slow and stupid and can't, can't do anything. They, the guy runs like for three feet, and he's like, I'm so tired. It's all in the music cues, too, at this point. If you really want to dissect that mm-hmm. scene, because they have that burr, burr, burr. It's like you were saying, it's a, uh, what was it, bone and, uh, oh, yeah. Skull or what? Very reminiscent to the bullies from Power Rangers. Yeah, it was like, You want to talk about that music? Totally, totally. And the, this isn't the only time we see him eating either. He, I think he was supposed to be doing gross things, like oh, kind yeah. of like, yeah, just totally gross out. What do you mean by gross things? <laughs> well, he's just yeah, every he scene you see his him mouth open or like. Oh, there was one part where I thought he was going to throw up. Too. Yeah. He's out of breath. He gets punched in the belly. He gets yeah. a. I mean, they are pulling a kind of Kevin McAllister beating the crap out of these people. So. Yeah, a wet bandit situation. Mm-hmm. In, in particular, I believe the scene where uh, where they were first trading, where Leon is first trading in the gold. That particular scene in general is probably the grossest one because, like, his mouth is agape open with like half chewed oh, food, yeah. and I just I had to look away. I was yeah, like, I, did too. I was like, nope. That's real nasty. I don't got time for this. <laughs> it's like, I don't want this in my life right now. <laughs> they made him look gross. Oh, I feel bad for that actor because they, they they really grossed him up for this part. They like shaved his face and tried to like film him like he had a double chin all the time, like underneath of his head. And then like they let a five o'clock shadow grow back, so it was like dingy, like messy, like fat with like food and and the long a crazy hair mullet, like. It was bad. Yep. And they grossed him up real good. Permanent doofus. He was the butt of the joke. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They kind of reminded me of, like, nothing but trouble characters. No. I, which I never want to think about that movie ever again. <laughs> no, but, no, um, no. <laughs> I think I think you brought Joel to the level of pain, pain that you had seeing these guys. Watching these guys. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of nothing but trouble, I saw a recent photo of Dan Aykroyd. And, uh... He's got that penis nose. It's no longer a prosthetic. His, his nose has turned into. I've seen the same photo where he's. You holding, know what I'm talking about? I believe he's holding a a, a uh, bottle of his fine his crystal fine skull. crystal skull in one hand and a bottle of clamato. That is correct. I believe yeah, in man, the other he, hand. He just looks like he's got the. Yeah, it's not good. Like oh. wow, art, art imitates life. I, mean, I, I love I love <laughs> Dan Aykroyd. I apologize. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Dan Aykroyd, don't get mad at me. I, I, yeah. You know what, Joel. I'm sure Dan Aykroyd loves you. Oh, he's Don't rich. Worry. He's rich as Don't hell. Worry. He doesn't need no exist. That's the way it should be. <laughs> he's, yeah. too, he's too busy uh, fighting aliens and evolution That's, to deal with you, man. Uh, what? Dan Aykroyd is fighting aliens and evolution? Yeah. He's the mayor. Oh, yeah. It's, it's probably the least memorable part of the movie. I didn't remember <laughs> that at all. I, I've seen evolution a what, lot. I'm what, sorry. Once I see donkey lips on the screen, I'm just like, I don't care about anybody else. So what's that? E- Ethan Soupley's up there too. This guy was supposed to be like a like a sight gag donkey lips type character. Absolutely, <laughs> he, was, he was totally supposed to be a Chris Farley ish. You know, 
clumsy and all this stuff like that. He doesn't have. I don't know how to say this. Chris Farley has a charisma about him that this guy cannot touch, you know? He's got a manic... He's yo. he's trying. Exactly. He, this guy is tr- acting his darndest. Are you talking yeah, about the guy you know? in the movie? Yeah. yeah this no, he's doing like, fine. I'm just saying he's no Chris Farley. He's oh, yeah. doing what yeah. he was told to do. And yeah. I think he did that well because it is uncomfortable and awkward and you can tell he is supposed to be the butt of the joke or mm-hmm. whatever. But, yeah, I think Joel, I think all of us love Chris Farley, R.I.P. And, yeah, just from our perspective, this guy couldn't compare. And I don't know if that's what he was going for or not, but yeah. but it, I could see some, I could see that. Sure. Yeah. I was just... As a possibility. Yeah. I was just picking out something to compare it to, that's all. Yeah. Sounds good to me. He does just as good as the three ninjas surfer baddies, <laughs> like you said. <laughs> There was something else it reminded me of. Home Alone, Nothing But Trouble, and, uh... Wait Until Dark. Oh, you were saying the the dogs in DuckTales. Oh, yeah, the Beagle Boys. Yeah. yeah. They're definitely the Beagle Boys. Oh, yeah? No Bob, no Bob Eagle. I gotta say, though, I mean, if, if these are all the, the things we're imagining them, then they probably did their job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I they they inhabited those characters. I believe that they were really those slobby, disgusting people. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're running around. They're trying to find out where the kids are getting the gold from. Like, uh, Billy goes back to his house, and and Granny, like when he gets there on their bike with the with the uh, Hannah, is that what her name is? Hannah, Hannah? correct, sir. Correct. Billy Bright, like, there's man. there's an ambulance outside. He runs in, and Granny's on the couch. There's some some Jamoke is there, being like, "Oh, you'll be just fine. You need to get a pacemaker eventually." And he's like, "Granny, I'm so sorry. Like, you didn't do anything, kid. You just weren't in the house." He's like, "Can I do anything for you?" And Granny's like, "Oh, get me a cold glass of water." And he's like, "No problem. Let me just poke you with the finger. I know turns things to gold." Okay, I'll be right back. Lens flare. <laughs> When he gets back, we got a full gold grandma, which I'm sure is somebody's fetish. Grant, golden grannies. <laughs> Speaking of fetishes, golden huh? girls. <laughs> exactly. Golden oh. girls. Sarah for the win on this podcast. Zero Aaron, zero Joel, podcast one Sarah. Over. <laughs> That's the scorecard oh, right there. Yeah. Somebody won fist bump. <laughs> I don't even know if we can record anymore. This yeah. Is, it's, I think the computer just blew up. <laughs> I th- I'm afraid that this is going to blow up everyone's devices. They're trying to listen to this podcast now. Yeah. Was that good? Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, while this is happening, to go back to the movie before, oh. be- before this, kind of, this is destroyed. <laughs> Uh, young Leon, the bully, has gone to the witch's house by himself, and she's like, what are you doing in here? And he's like, I, w- I want Midas powers, too. She's like, you don't get those, because I know you're a greedy bastard. I'll give you what you <laughs> really need. He's like, huh? And then her eyes turn black. It gets really creepy. There's a couple of, like... Yeah. Like, real creepy moments. This is like a straight-up before-the-X-Files logo hits moment. <laughs> Right before Mulder and Scully show up. <laughs> That's what just happened. Someone just died, and we zoomed into these black eyes. <laughs> yeah, you hear that theme song right after that happens. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, Billy doesn't is not happy. He, t- he and uh, Hannah go to the witch's house, and when they get there, Leon is there, and he's like, Hey, guys, how's it going? This is what she did. She, I guess she changed his attitude. That's what he really needed. He well, needed an attitude adjustment. Well, first of all, you notice that he is the good guy now because uh-huh. he's got a white shirt on and his hair has been parted extremely harshly <laughs> from one side of his head to the other. And they're not going to be able to straighten that thing out. I mean, it's all freaking shaved on the side. So I, what are they going to do? I, it's, it's, you've seen the part. You should have put a wig on him. His shirt was tucked in. Oh. Man. He was, he was acting more clean cut. He offered them a beverage. And you, you remember what Hannah called him? Uh, Dorcas. A uh, Dorcas. Oh. Yeah. Um, this has got some real 90-isms in it. She says she gave him manners. Mm-hmm. So he's like nice and polite now. Well, that's good. I mean, that's the least that she could do. 
Were you going to say something? Sure I'm just were really... try- Was it rank? Was that the word? Uh, that was no, used? like why? Why you uh, ragging? Ragging. You ragging on him? Ragging. Why are you ragging? You ragging on me? Why are you yeah. ragging on me, man? <laughs> I thought that was a Fillmoreism. No, that I, was not from I our hometown not. of Fillmore. <laughs> it will be ragging on me. You're ragging on me, man. <laughs> yeah. When you least expect it, John, I'm going to drop that on you. I don't, I don't know, know where, where that originated. I, I, I can't even. I don't know. I, I still say it, so okay. I, I mean, but that's that's my 90s era showing, obviously. And I still say Dorcas. Hey, well, to the credit of whoever wrote this movie, they at least talked to a kid first. Sure. It, it feels like. Another thing that I feel, like, yeah. some of this dialogue definitely feels a bit natural. Hey, maybe maybe one of the kids just threw it in ab lib, too. Who knows? I think they're appropriately 90s dressed, too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are. Um, yeah, I I feel like the outfits they were wearing at the school and stuff were time appropriate. There were some that I thought maybe they had to, like, find in Romania right then. Yeah. Um which seemed a little bit more odd. Like, I don't know if they got the overalls for that guy at the end <laughs> in, in, like, America or not. No. Yeah, I don't know. It's exactly. a Romanian special. <laughs> well, perhaps perhaps no, they just know. asked him to sit in with yeah. what, he, what is, he normally is tired. I don't know. Yeah, I feel bad was, thinking that, but... Well, maybe they were like, we need a couple of people for this last part. We didn't know we were going to need to cast or whatever. <laughs> Are we talking about the guys in the shack? Again? Yeah! <laughs> okay, yeah, they were definitely Romanians, so maybe the heroes of our what story. they were wearing, yeah. <laughs> Shack, the true heroes. Shack boys. The shack, the shack boys. I think they called the cops, so they're, they good, were the they're heroes. good for something. Yeah. They're the heroes, dude. If my grandma turned into gold because I accidentally touched her, mm-hmm. I would be very upset. Yeah. I I feel that he's a pro. He was pretty upset, though. Yeah. He was he pretty fainted. upset in this movie. Yeah. yeah. And he was, like, upset when she came. I thought that was cool. That he didn't try to like act tough when she when his friend came and she was like, yeah. I feel that that was actually a pretty well shot scene too, where mm-hmm. the friend was able to like be like, "Hey, dude, this is what you need to do." Yeah, we need to figure this out. And then when they went back to the house, he starts saying to her, "You need to help me because my grandma is solid gold." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the girl, the girl says that like more than once. Your grandma's solid Your gold. Grandma's gold. Yeah, we gotta do something. Well, it was like the deadpan. I wrote it down. The line. Oh yeah, yeah. The posed question of time-related magical curses. How do they work in different time zones? Because. Uh, oh yeah. Wasn't there a question about what's what what uh uh? Because he was like. Oh yeah, noon. They, Noon. noon. By noon, you need to figure it out. Well, because she, they, they go back to the witch's house. That's when they see that Leon is a nice guy now, and the witch, is, the witch is like, "I don't want you in the house. Get out!" You know, and she's like yelling at them. And Billy's like, "No, I need to know how to fix this. I need to know how to repair this." And she's like, "I can't tell you how to do that. Only you can figure out how to reverse this spell." And he's like, "That's bull." No, that's it. No, he does stand up to her, which is pretty cool. It's like three in the morning. They're doing all this stuff. Yeah, these kids are in over their heads. Yeah. Just, look, Billy, you need to at least try. Your grandmother is gold. <laughs> <laughs> but huh? just very matter of fact, was. she ain't wrong. Your grandma is gold. Yeah. Dude, out. just in case you forgot. Yeah. It should have been a flashback. She's gold. Like, Your grandma's gold. And that, and that's when he walks across his living room saying, I'm confident. I have courage. Yeah. I'm confident. And I she's have like, courage. Are you a crazy person? Yeah. She Yeah. Well, they take a trip to the library because they figure they might as well go to the source. And study the information on this legend. Right, because they're not exactly clear, but you know, it has to do they they break in. This this is another they, there's a gate at this library, and the library's gigantic. It's like another haunted house, but no, hey, it's just a real library. Hey, man, in Romania, books are important, That's, dude. I wish it was like that here. You've got a security guard. You've got gates. Those books are protected, man. Yep, they're all in glass cases. Yep. Oh, yeah, the glass cases mm-hmm. are pretty nice. And you have to read by matchlight. That kind of reminded me of the library in the Dunwich Horror. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ancient protected tomes yeah. of, of uh, Mystatonic uh, University. Yeah, she's just got the Necronomicon there. Hey, can I have the Necronomicon? What do you, how do you say it? I'm Necronomicon. Sh- I'm, I'm sure that the, the, the this book of fables is right next to the Necronomicon mm-hmm. in the Miskatonic <laughs> University as well. It's also next to those mist books that take you to different lands when you touch the, the square. Yeah. I kind of want to rewatch that movie. That was oh, crazy. it's good. Yeah, I was looking for a Blu-ray copy. Oh, <laughs> what's, what's, the ring, what's the ring thing where he puts his oh, hands yeah, up the inside saying, of his head? I don't know. That's yeah. Weird. When you said he was shaking his booty or whatever. Oh, uh, hell yeah, He was dude. doing the Macarena. <laughs> I can't remember what Oh, that said. he puts his thumbs out. That's right. Yeah. But then he's got those sick rings, rings, too. Yeah. yeah. Listener, done a tour. The episode <laughs> we previously covered. Check it out today. It is one of our personal favorites. Yeah. And it's a good movie. So, yeah, they, they get into the library. They start reading. It turns out Midas was only able to cure himself after the, uh, the god Pan revealed that he had to touch each of the items that he had previously turned into gold in, I believe, in the order that he touched them or something like that. And he had to do it before noon the next day. And in order to prevent himself from turning into gold, he had to bathe in the river of something, something, in the land of something, something. And so they put it together. He's got to go back and touch everything. He's touched. That's gold. Mm -hmm. And he has to eventually find some sort of river that he can bathe in. Because uh, this is when they notice that his eyes have turned gold. His teeth are turning gold, too. Oh, that happens later when he's at the mall. Well, and, they and they're trying to set up oh, that... Oh, uh, his eyes at first. They're going to set up yeah. that heist with Jackie Brown. They end up, heist with Jackie Brown. They end up getting, they end up getting uh, some burgers. Mm-hmm. They're going to figure it out. They get some burgers. And then they see the two idiots that have been tailing them, wondering how they got all this gold. Con shop people. <laughs> that's like that's my new band. Reality show like swamp people or something. They have they have pawn stars. I, I know, I know. I'm gonna rip some tags. Oh wait, that's a instead of the pet shop, shop boys, it's the pawn shop. Oh my pawn shop people. You guys, truth truth moment here. Mm-hmm. I really like pawn shops. They're cool. I they're cool. You can find some cool stuff. That's not popular, but I have found some cool treasures. Just, you know, it does feel a little bit funny sometimes, like if you were at an estate sale, like this was somebody's that, and they cared about it. But um, I have found some cool things. Sure. That's just an aside. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, despite despite the somewhat shady nature of a pawn shop, I think it's nice that there's a last ditch effort for some people. Yeah. That, you know, can get cash. No, and, yeah, and, I you get know, it. No you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I, I can just, agree with you on that. The only guilt I've ever felt associated with it was like, I hope this isn't somebody's who wanted it back. Correct. Type thing. Eh, screw those people. <laughs> wow. Wow, Joel. Brutal. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, they stole Grandma. And in, in a hilarious series of pratfalls, by the way, they like oh, trying yeah, to get the ladder. Scene. and uh... There was a moment. <laughs> A very weird moment. A very, <laughs> very weird animation or not animation. We couldn't figure it out. We rewound it three times. Listeners, yeah, we rewatched this three times in a row. Not the movie. We watched the, the scene. scene. Just trying, so we could figure it out. They're trying to climb into the upstairs window of the house for some reason. The other lady has gotten in just fine without doing that. Right. It's because they're so the stupid. Door. <laughs> and they find gold grandma on the couch, and they decide... <laughs> Silver grandma's in the bathtub. <laughs> Where's bronze grandma? <laughs> oh, she's underground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then they decide they're going to try to carry this grandma away. He's coming up to the window. She tries to help him get in, and there's this really annoying moment that's crazy. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where, yeah, he falls backwards on the ladder. Yeah, her glove slips off. Her- because Oh, well, we forgot to mention they got into stealth clothing. Oh, right. So With they the both look race. like they're ready to get to <laughs> a leather bar. <laughs> Give me a break. 
<laughs> As I said during the movie, they look like those backup dancers during uh, Weird Al Yankovic's uh, fat. <laughs> kind of reminded me of that one episode of Spaced, where everyone dresses up in stealth clothes to go save the puppy. There you go, yeah, see? That too. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, big guy, the ladder falls back, and the scene cuts to a shot of the moon. It's like a silhouette. Yeah, I've got a picture of, of it and I'll include it in the notes. And <laughs> then even a person falling back. It looks like there's a man standing on the ladder somewhat, a humanoid figure. But then there's like a leg that yeah. flies out and like it looks like a dummy. Yeah. It it somehow looks like animation and also a, a dummy. real dummy at the same time. Yeah. It's it, weird. Yeah. And I mean, it's the, yeah, of course, the whole shot's supposed to be, you know, hilarious and stuff like that, but we were just so weirded out. We were like, no, let's see that again. Let's see what's going on here. It gave me the same vibe as the movie that we watched a couple weeks ago together mm -hmm. when they were doing the money exchange during um, your, your, your pick, Sarah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what it reminded me of. Just so kind of like, obviously supposed to be still in the universe, but yeah, but not at the Crazy. same time. Just giving yeah. you this weird kind of like, this doesn't feel real vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I got that I vibe that. when we saw that scene. Yeah, it's a movie about a kid who can turn things into gold by touching him, but this definitely took us out of the movie somehow. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the weird, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. It, it has that weird, like, this doesn't feel, I mean, sure, there's cartoony things going on in this movie, but this, this scene, like, all of it just felt like this is like supposed to be a lie. Like, this isn't real what you're seeing. There were a couple of moments with those two that I felt were, like, kind of David Lynchy and, like, yeah. like, that annoying lady that was in the most recent season of Twin Peaks, the one that was just like yelling and like wasn't making any sense, and like the lady that in the apartment yeah, with the dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of in, in Mulholland Drive, the lady who gets uh, shot. The old couple. Uh, <laughs> no, not the old couple, but they also. Yeah, they also. could have been running the pawn shop. Totally, it's like almost a social commentary. <laughs> Like, a small town are, Pennsylvania is just going... What are you really saying, though? <laughs> downhill. I don't know. Yeah. I forgot. There's one thing. I want to go back to when they go back to confront the witch and try to get her to take off the power. Mm -hmm. One of the spells the witch does is makes this, like, lion gargoyle all of a sudden <laughs> appear next to Billy and just go like, ah! And Billy's like, leave me alone. And the, the, the gargoyle looks like, aw. I'm like... But it's like a full CGI thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just amazing. It's it's um yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they get Granny, and they decide we got to melt this Granny down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and because of course their pawn shop is totally equipped with a smelter smelter in the back room, absolutely for this sort of occasion. That kind of reminded me of the statue of Michael Jackson by Jeff Koons. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a bit of a... I, I don't know. <laughs> Is this a real art thing? Yeah. And did they melt it down? <laughs> no, but there's like goldish parts on it, I think. Is he holding hands with a chimp? There's a chimp. Oh, okay. oh cool. Yeah, there we go. I think I do know in my Wait, brain what you're talking about. We might have seen it at the Broad or Broad or Was whatever. this the same, by the same dude who did the Freddie Mercury statue? Hang on, I'll show you. That statue's pretty cool. No, I did the Transformers statue. Oh, okay. Did he do the Gundam statue? Is he the guy who does the giant balloons? Mm -hmm. Oh, that guy's cool. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah, tight. that totally was at the Broad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, listeners, the statue's pretty cool. Yeah, that was creepy. So we saw like, <laughs> a foot sticking out of a trunk, and it was reminding me of like Michael Jackson's golden leg like sticking out. Yeah, we'll have to <laughs> include a link to that also. Yeah. Anyway. That's another one. See, they they do a lot of lighthearted stuff, but there's also some like, like this could make us dead. Potentially like, horrifying. Stuff. Yeah, stuff. potentially really bad stuff. So they follow. He's like trying to bite a hamburger. The hamburger turns into gold, and then his teeth are <laughs> starting to turn into gold, and. <laughs> They're like, touch the hamburger or whatever. Whatever they start reminding him to touch things again if he's turned them into gold, like the book in the library, and and then he chases after the two 
Dumbasses. Gotta say, his golden grill gives gives him like a hundred percent clout level at this point. <laughs> it's pretty good. This is a very early grill. Oh yeah, <laughs> and those contact lenses too. He's got a pretty sick look going. He does. Yeah, I've been watching too much Star Trek recently. It's just just like he's one of the Borta or whatever, right? Uh, alien <laughs> species that's scaring me. <laughs> so when we get back to the pawn shop. With these two people, I feel like this is where it starts to get a little bit weird. Like, a little bit like, I don't know which direction it's going to go. Before this, I felt like, even though some of it was crazy, like, I kind of knew, I understood the beats of the story. But when we get to the pawn shop, they have something they're going to melt Grandma down in. And um, he climbs a ladder and turns the ladder into gold to get up to the roof. And then he lets his friends in the back or something. Right, after after figuring out what they were going to do. Yeah, he lets them in. And, and don't don't forget, when he climbs that ladder and turns it to gold, he also unturns it to gold. Yeah. And then the camera goes back to the two other kids. Oh, yeah, he remembered to turn it not gold anymore. <laughs> yeah. They made, definitely, Leon makes it a point to remind the audience mm -hmm. right. that this needs to be done. Yep. Right. He's keeping up with the... Lessons of the movie, the rules, whatever. I, I felt that this this shot was something that they had to include because they were like, "Oh, we need to make the story have continuity." Still, you know, <laughs> made those kids talk about it. You know? or may, yeah, or maybe they were thinking like, "Kids aren't going to remember what's going on." Or yeah, why didn't you just keep that letter go ladder gold? Well, you know, because it was probably going to be. Yeah, yeah, kids are that the movie just thinks kids are dumb for certain things and not for other things. So yeah, then then they tie all the kids up somehow. Right. Yeah, these kids they get into the room. Oh, they get an altercation. Talk. Yeah. And they got all the other stuff that he brought in that was gold too. Mm hmm And they put it all into this like what looks like a wood chipper, but it's like Supposed to be something they can melt gold down in. Oh, it's even got a spigot on the side that they use later. So yeah, it's something. I feel like they were um, they were ready for gold. <laughs> I've known someone who worked at a pawn shop, and they told me that they do melt down gold into bars. Sure, or that or that a person can do that. You know, right? And this was like, oh, I guess I'm not the only person who's ever heard of this idea before. That like you can turn gold into bars and then get tons of money for them or whatever. If it's a certain carrot weight and if it makes, yeah. It's not just like whatever, melt down whatever yeah. you want. It's a dream we all have. Yeah. yeah. Of melting down our gold in yeah. the bars. Um, <laughs> yep. So at this point, they're like, they're tied up, which I, and they just need to figure out a, a quick way out. They take the ID out of his friend's pocket and then he touches it and turns it into gold. And he used that to Which also it. sharpens the it. Rope. Oh, yeah, because we know that gold, much like adamantium, just turns into the sharpest known, yeah. known object in the universe. Yeah. I, I guarantee somebody's crafted a gold weapon or something like that. I don't think... Like, I've never worried that my one of my cards or IDs was was going to be sharp enough to cut me, and I didn't assume if it turned into metal that would be the case. But, you know... Listen, in Minecraft, gold has the lowest durability for armor oh, or no. any or any sort of useful tool. Well, that makes sense. Like it's super soft, right? Yep. Yeah. Gold is a soft metal. Yeah. Yeah, you could chew it. I'm not saying all gold is soft, but it is a softer metal than some other stuff for sure. And it melts really fast, as we see Grandma melting. <laughs> Grandma melts. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Grandma is melting. <laughs> and they throw bowling balls at these guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, it's, it's like a choose-your-own-adventure book story. Grandma is melting. Yeah. She fully... That is like a no-turn-back type of thing. For me, in that moment, I'm like, she is dead. Yeah. In, in, in If this were a video game, this would be like the timed challenge where you have to like knock the thugs out, save Grandma before the clock runs out. Right. So Grandma is a puddle in the bottom of this thing that they have. And she's mixed in with other things. Other it's not gold just Grandma. items. Yeah. And 
they threw a bowling ball <laughs> at his head. <laughs> Doesn't it make a noise too? Like, yeah, like it's a, like, like a, that. That's like a bonk. fatal blow. <laughs> oh, they're dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, yeah, they kill these guys. It's kind of crazy for a kid's movie. And then they pull their bodies to the side, and I'm like, wait, are they really dead? Uh, let's tie up these corpses. <laughs> Everybody in this movie has incredible strength. They can move dead weight. They can lift gold things that should be they, incredibly they're heavy. They're carrying all kinds of heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're ca- and then they fill up the buckets with the gold grandma and other things. Oh, those yep. buckets. The, yep. same, the same mass of a person, but in gold. Right. And two they, buckets. Luckily, Grandma apparently was very small because <laughs> she fits in two, <laughs> two buckets. Yeah. They're lucky they didn't spill it. Yeah, especially yeah. when they're driving, you yeah. know, because they get in the car. They steal the bad guy's car. They don't spill a drop. They but, don't spill it. They mm-hmm. drive straight over to the apartment. Mm-hmm. And yep. they are trying to figure out, yeah, how they're going to put it all together. Yep. So they, they run upstairs because they like, wait a minute. We can't put Grandma back together. Maybe that's not all of her in one bucket. So they, they take her upstairs to the bathtub, and and Jigsaw's up there going, like, you want to play a game? Uh, I, for some reason, I never see a bathtub. I keep thinking of the first Saw movie. I, I believe while we were watching the movie, too, you were like, oh, no, this is going to be like Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> then as they dump this molten yeah. gold into yeah. this bathtub. Yeah. yeah. They're on the second floor. <laughs> that was you. kind of a cool visual with the gold in the bathtub. Oh, yeah. Some sort of thick gold-colored liquid, whatever it was, or they, going yeah. slowly down towards the drain. They forgot to plug the tub. And they real quickly They're stupid did it, and it wasn't even. It wasn't even a like, oh my gosh, oh no! It was just yeah. like I fixed it real quick. They yeah. need no that because they needed to show the importance of the plug. Oh, because yeah. Because what happens next, guys? What happens next? Yeah, those fat, Our thugs. those fat people bring. <laughs> Our thugs show up. <laughs> People break in again. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, the <laughs> not. I'm I'm talking about the way the movie plays them, audience. I I promise it's not. I'm not picking on them like that. The movie's just like they're fat. Yeah, we we don't what? care about that. I believe Joel referred the to them as extras from the Weird Owls. Uh, yeah, I mentioned oh, yeah. that. I already mentioned that. Oh, you're, did you already mention that? Yes, sorry, no, sorry. That's fine. No, it's just it's it, it's I, just I, absolutely. I recently just watched that music video oh, yeah, again, yeah. so it, yeah, yeah. There's that part where he gets his hand in the mouse trap. He's like, ah, yep. Michael Jackson. Oh, sorry, it's a really good. Full Ow! Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> really well done stuff. Let's watch that instead of these movies. And by that, I mean anything else. <laughs> Uh, but they're up there, and they're like, "You better tell us where you're getting that gold, or we're gonna pull the plug. We're gonna pull the plug on Granny on all this gold that we <laughs> no! want. We're gonna put all the gold down the drain if you don't tell us the secret." Like, wait, wait, don't you guys want gold? <laughs> yeah. Does this kind of ruin what you want? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, these are sewer people. They know where that that gold's gonna end up. Well, they know that this kid could make things into gold, so maybe in the long run, they could just. They just kidnap the kid and make him yeah, touch they, things. They're going to kill yeah. these kids. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, no, they just might keep that one kid, like, you know, locked up and just making things into gold for that's them. True. Well, they don't know he makes gold until he's like, okay, I'll tell you the truth. Oh. When I touch a thing, it turns into gold. They're like, you think I believe that? I don't think so. I was like, hold out your finger. And they're dumb. So she holds out her finger. She gets turned into gold. Her brother faints because he can't take it anymore. And they're like, okay, now touch the gold thing and, and uh, bring your grandmother back. And he touches it. <clears throat> Nothing happens. It's because there were two other pieces he forgot. He forgot. He forgot the other stuff. He, he forgot changed. his long dead mouse <laughs> and his baseball hat. And he, they, they take it and he ungolds them. And he touches it and <laughs> electric shocks again. This poor kid's hair. <laughs> Oh, yeah, his hair gets all like, whoa! Yeah, it gets all frazzled. Electrified. Like, Extreme. Like a dock from. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back, back to, to the, the future. future. Yep. And Granny's back. She's back in the bathtub with a hamburger and a mouse <laughs> and a watch. And she's like, <laughs> don't forget that burger. Cat. To the evil lady, she's like, are you my grandson's friend or whatever? And then they call, I guess they call the police, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm like, okay, get these guys. <laughs> yeah, get these two numbskulls out of here. But, oh, we forgot to mention, Billy is still turning into gold. Like, part of his uh, ear yeah. is now gold. This is, the, and... this is the part where we kind of already thought the movie was over, but it kept going. And everything ended up happily ever after at the end here. Nope, not. Nope. So he's, like, turning into solid gold. Oh, no. Solid gold do? dancers. And he, <laughs> yeah, he, like, they talk to a cop, and the cop's <laughs> like, well, there used to be a river, but now it's at the sewage treatment plant or something like that. This would be the arresting officer who's yeah. taking care of our goons. The one, the one who wasn't actually talking, and they dubbed him over. Yep. Yeah, that guy. Uh, so they, they get on the bike, and they're, they're taking him out to the ball game. Uh, drive him over to the river, which is fenced off, and this cop is like, oh, I, I gotta take these criminals away. Oh, I need gasoline. And oh, yeah, and then the idiot cop. It's like they keep making people stupid, but I guess that's a <laughs> They've common... They've got the stupid touch. <laughs> <laughs> the touch of stupid? Everything they touch turns stupid. stupid? <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, this I, isn't this isn't something you get from a witch, though, right? You don't go to a house. Oh, they made a witch. <laughs> they made a wish to that witch. That's a common thing in kids' movies, though. They oh make yeah, grown ups look stupid. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the cop is like in the bathroom with his pants down. Uh, they get a little girl to open the door for them so they can take off in the cop car. Wait a minute, what? I just don't even. Oh, don't you were even. talking about the, they open the door of the cop car. I thought you meant that cop was in the bathroom where a little girl opens the door. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, the arresting officer doesn't. <sighs> Sorry. No, the arresting Sorry. officer is in the bathroom. <laughs> a little girl comes up and opens the car door and lets the bad guys out. This movie, guys. <laughs> Sorry, that, that hit me right in the funny bone. Real good. <laughs> Anyways, Eric, what was just- Oh, well, I was just really perplexed because, like, the cop didn't, like, handcuff these two. So they're just, like, going through their pockets, getting their little sneaky, like, tools together. Yeah. I think one of them has, like, a, a, a spool of, like, metal twine or something, and he's, like, trying to get the keys out of the the, the, the ignition. <laughs> yeah. And as Sarah mentioned, that's when they, they coax this little girl who just happens to be walking by. This little girl's an accomplice now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aiden, Aiden and abetting. <laughs> Yep. Uh, and in Romania, it's just the death penalty, so. I gotta say, though, this this cop car <laughs> kind of just looks like an Oldsmobile that yeah. someone decided to turn into a cop car. No, no, it's for cops. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it was the, the, the police force was like, you know what? We just need an Oldsmobile that looks like a cop car. <laughs> Can anybody find me a quasi-American car? <laughs> you do the best with what you've got. <laughs> oh, you, you know, that scene earlier when I was saying that there was an ambulance at the house, you don't see the ambulance. The only thing you see is, like, blue and red lights, like, reflecting off of the wall. <sighs> There's some cool lighting stuff in this movie, like, um, real tangent, but no, really, cool. uh, the library scene, when they're lighting those matches, oh, they're yeah. just hitting them with, like, a... With like a spotlight or something, and and when the match goes out, they turn off the spotlight. That was that was cool. I was trying to figure out what was the motivation behind that because it seemed like this extra effort thing. It like it's not that funny that he like kind of burns himself one time. I don't get it either. Yeah, I don't understand why they did it, but I liked the match keeps going out. I liked it though. Yeah, sure. It was Mm -hmm. cool lighting effect. Anyways, they they take him to the river. Take him to the river. The cop runs out with his pants down. Right, and he's like, oh no! <laughs> this isn't the only pants down thing in this movie, too. Oh yeah, when What's they were the trying to one? they were trying to get into the apartment with the ladder. Yeah, he dropped his pants. His pants. Oh, head head go- yeah. goon doofus. Yeah, don't you remember you just saw that fat guy's penis for some reason? No, that didn't no. happen. Sorry. No, we had boxers on, Joel. Mm-hmm. It was just like a goof. It's a goof, goof. moment. These guys. Yeah, no, they're goofs. <laughs> These guys are dumbasses. <laughs> ah, yes, the dumbass. Like a dumbass in the wind. Earlier today, <laughs> something happened. I can't remember what. I said something about a dumbass in the wind. I don't know why. Yeah, somebody did something stupid when we were driving. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, so they're at the river, but 
young Billy is no longer able to move. He's a statue, so they they drag him over, but the two goofuses show up. Oh, by the way, there's two goofuses in this other shack, too, but they're they're the heroes of the, the movie. The heroes of our that. tale. Yeah, but... There's this, yeah, there's a water place where water falls down. It's like, it's like a sewage treatment aqueduct or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Like it looks like it's been designed to filter water through it. Right. And there's these two guys that are just in a shack next to it, like two employees. Those are two doofuses too, because they're like, oh, there's some kids over there about a fridge. Yep. Yeah. I better call the cops. But they're not fat, so. <laughs> That means they're not criminals, I guess, in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get the MIDI keyboard background song we whenever they're talking. Much, yeah, we don't get it's as much up, attention up. on the fact that they're real. Yeah, that <laughs> sound mix. That MIDI keyboard sound mixing was real bad. Yeah, I yeah. like. I should be able to hear the dialogue over this thing, guys. I was direct the video. What do you expect? When the bully's theme song's playing, you can't yeah, hear any like, of the dialogue. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So they get they get him over there, almost to the edge, and they're about to push him in. With the two fatsos show up again, and there's kind of a kind of a Russell struggle thing, and he does end up falling in the water. At this point, he's like a solid piece of gold, almost right. And he's he can't move. They've carried him there. Yep, he's cross legged. Yeah, yeah, he's cross legged like, like a, a Buddha, like edge. a Buddha. Mm-hmm. And they that's probably the joke they were going for. Accidentally right push him. Yeah. And he drowns. It's, yeah, it's a real tragic end to this movie. At least Grandma is still alive, but. There's a nice little shot moment of uh, the kid swim, or kind of like floating, and then when he falls off the waterfall part, it's obviously a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> he just kind of, kind of flies it's off like the side. It's like face down over that thing. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. I yeah. told you. But then he, he, he resurrects Joel. Yeah, he comes here. up out of the water. He's cured, and those guys get arrested again, hopefully by a different cop that won't be incompetent and well, having we, little girls open the door to the bathroom while he's in it. <laughs> we, we know we know that that officer lost his badge and yeah. his Oldsmobile cop yeah. car. Oh, what happened? You know, they when they drove away, they didn't unplug the, 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 the gas, the gas thing, oh. so I think the gas station blew up. It probably did blow died, up. Including the little girl. So, <laughs> no witnesses. <laughs> Yeah, so, so that should be the end of the movie. That's, he's cured, he comes out of the water. That's like, the end of the movie. Hallelujah. Right? I'm okay. Yep, the end. And then... Nope. No. No, another five or so minutes. Actually, it's like ten minutes. This is like the end of The Return of the King, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting all the endings. We're like, wait a minute, now what? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, me and, me and uh, Leon are going back to school. Well, they do, and the teacher's like, okay, no cheating oh, this yeah. time. yeah. And the teacher, there's this whole moment where the teacher tells him, like, not to cheat anymore and, and, you know, about what he wrote about what he did over the weekend. And then the other kid apologizes for not saying he was the one who cheated. And then the teacher makes a joke. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, some joke. Yeah. Jokes. That's a three stage joke there, by the yeah. way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go get the nurse. And once again, I appreciate the effort that they put into it. Yeah. It's just not necessarily funny. But, yeah. That was I, a three-stage joke right there. And then he leaves the, the classroom at the end of the day, or something like that. And uh, I don't know if he bikes home, but he gets home, and there's a brand a new bicycle. Oh, bicycle. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <With the> note. <laughs> mm-hmm. a note that said, Dear Sexy. <laughs> I know you've uh, you've got the bitterness of life. Now taste some of the sweetness. The sweet, sweetness. And it's like here's a bicycle, and here's twenty five thousand dollars signed the old witch. Yep, the old witch. <laughs> Brunhilda. The check will cash. It's gonna clear. Mm-hmm. It's made out magic of magic money. Cash it today, though, just to be on the same It's frustrated for three years from now. I wonder if the bank goes through a curse if, if, if they have to take care of that check. Like they have to go through a whole moral story. Is this real money? Hey, I'm bankrupt- gonna wish I didn't have it. Bankrupted later. the town. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So everything's gonna be fine. The end. Oh, wait. Grandma's running. Not really. It's not the end. Turns out she got her business back. 
She's running. He's got a bike. That's right. Her letters are back up on the sign, right, Joel? Yep. He, he's got right, way, way better at throwing newspapers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He tosses newspapers no problem now. Yep. And that Romanian guy's like, hey, kid, nice aim. And then he just goes by the house and then he just looks at it. Yep. And then he's like, you know, All right. nodding. All right. And then he bikes off, and that's the end. Yep. End scene. And then we get a we get a, a rock song of some sort about uh, that's from the Killer Band Battery Ass as a yeah, Battery Ass yeah, Crown on the Rich Crown on the Head or something crown like that. Crown on the that. Head, man, pretty cool. Yep, not that was all over the radio. Yep, it's nope. not it's no Crown on the Ground, but <laughs> I gotta say though, the sound effects when he was like solid statue of, of whenever like that because these kids picked him up. And they put whenever they put him down, it made like a statue noise, or, like a heavy metal object, yeah, like, touching the ground. That yeah. was a pretty cool sound effect. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. The when the bowling ball hits the lady in the head, there's a pretty good yeah uh, uh, sound. sound effect. Um, just full cartoon nut bar. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, that's why they couldn't afford a better soundtrack is because they uh, spent all their money on the sound effects guy. I feel like this is a low budget movie, but at the same time, like they pull off a lot for it being a low budget movie, and they were in a different country in some parts and stuff. Like that, that did seem a little bit inexpensive in some parts, but it also seemed like pretty cool. Like there oh, were yeah. these massive buildings that were like old stone, like you know, pretty awesome houses and and like yeah, whatever, like these old historical looking places. And I think, I think that it did a pretty good job for a kid's movie, actually. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. I feel like the, the budget was only slightly lower than like, say three ninjas that way. And that's, you know, that had a big studio behind it and stuff like that. Spending the money on it. Sabrina, the teenage witch. That was the other thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Another movie probably shot in Romania. I don't know. I wasn't, wasn't looking back then. I don't know why I did get a little bit of a Neil Breen feel. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely totally. got some magical day, yeah, guys. It's, yeah, it's totally. that's what I mean. The, the girl looked at it and wrote it in her journal. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical day. It was a. Uh, what is that called? Fateful Findings. Fateful Findings. With less nudity. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the kids' version of Fateful uh, yeah. Findings. <laughs> No, the dialogue did make, you know... Yeah, it, there's just to, as much nudity in it. I don't didn't have, they didn't have to repeat everything three times. <laughs> as, like, Endangered Species, it was... Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also species. shot in Romania. It's got, it's got way better graphics than Endangered Species, too. Yeah, I gotta say, for that, the witches' CGI stuff was awesome. Yeah, that's that was, that was that some was cool. Fun. That was some cool. That's some, like, Disney-style witches' effects. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's uh, let's wrap this guy up. Let's talk about some lessons. What you would wish from the witch if you got the chance to do that. Now, now think about this. It's I, I want you to purposely choose something that might backfire on you the way the Midas touched it. Don't just pick something that honestly is good and will help everybody. Because I think it needs to teach you a lesson, and that'll be the lesson we learn. Now, would you like the answer in context as if we're 90s kids um, wishing for well, something? I, yeah, or, if, I, if you or do you want it, or, or just spot. me as myself right now? You are a 90s kid. Okay. Yeah, I saw you sketching the other day. Thanks. And uh, whatever thing, you're playing a PlayStation 1. I think it'd be good for me to use my imagination as me right now. Yeah, okay, absolutely. fair enough. But that's I right. don't, I don't no, that's think great. we all have to do it the same way. Don't worry. You get plenty of time to think about it while I read this outro stuff. Hey, listener, if you have any suggestions, write in to please don't podcast at gmail, uh, gmail.com. Yes, that's the email address. <laughs> or message us on Facebook at facebook.com slash pdsmios. If you uh, listen to us on iTunes, you have access to iTunes through your computer or on your phone or whatever, we'd appreciate it if you left us a star and or written rating. If you want to send some money our way, you know, possibly buy our love, which is very possible, you know, we, you, we, we want to love you. We want to feel the love for you. You just gotta, you know, you gotta be 
you gotta, we gotta wet our beaks a little. You know, you just gotta send us some of that money. Again, that's not true. <laughs> Anyways, you, you, you can send us money through Venmo. Uh, our tag is at PDSMIOS or from our Ko-Fi site at ko-fi.com slash PDSMIOS. All these links are in the show notes. Check out the other podcasts on our network on eartrumpetaudio.com. Great shows like Can We Colt by the podcast of Grayskull, Beckett to the Future. Have I told you about Beckett to the Future, Aaron? Why no, Joel? Tell me about it. It's a, uh, what, what is the name of that show? It's, I don't know, Joel. It's, uh, Quantum <laughs> Beckett. Leap. Quantum Leap. It's a Quantum oh. Leap podcast. Oh. That they watch the episodes in chronological order. No way. Of when Sam goes back in time. So, wow. Them, yeah, it, based on that. And, uh, you know, it's really good, funny episodes that huh. are really cool. And they just happen to be on the same network as us. That's pretty awesome, guys. Yeah. So check out that stuff. Also, love you like crazy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, can't, I guess I should mention that. I mean, Jacob was on the show after I threatened guess. his life. No. The other day, so Joel, quit <laughs> threatening the lives of our guests. Love you like crazy is a personal favorite of mine. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Everything available at eartrumpetaudio.com. All right, I'm going to grant you guys a single wish. Uh, Joel, I seem to have walked onto your haunted mansion. Yep, uh, knocked over your cobwebs and have seen, and uh, have you seen my cat? Statue? Seen your CGI cat statues? Yes, I've got two of them. <gasps> Man. And there's cobwebs all over. It's gross. It's Everywhere. Really gross. Everywhere, Joel. So what would you like to wish for? What do you really need? I'd like to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to leave, Joel. <laughs> no, but what do you really want? I know you're a... <laughs> I know you're a bad person at heart. <laughs> I'll make you come up with something that's selfish. Uh, I'm going to wish for a baseball cap that I put on backwards and it sends me in other dimensions, a.k.a. Mighty Max. That's a good choice. See, but what you're going to learn is that <laughs> what, you, what you really <laughs> wanted was to be home and how important home is, spending such time away. Okay. Oh, dang. Yeah. That was like some Stephen King level of like, you know? Yeah. Like needful things. Oh, kinda, and kinda then the, char- the character you like died right there towards the end. Oh, know, man. Stephen King stuff. Yep, there you go. Bam. Oh, my lesson for this though, for this particular movie is uh consider having a twenty four hour library in your town. So you can go get those books at midnight or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. never know when some kids are gonna need to come up with a plan. <laughs> twenty four hour library. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sarah, do you have a wish or a lesson? A wish I wish that I could have all the chocolate in the world. That's a pretty good wish. Man. That is a good wish. That's a great wish. Unfortunately, when all the chocolate disappears, it starts a war with several other countries, thinking that America has stolen all the chocolate. We're on the verge of nuclear war when you realize that one of the best things that a person can do for another person, a friend, is to share. Oh, That's dang. True. Sharing is caring. That was like some moral stories. You do keep the really good chocolate for yourself. I but was going to say, I think, I think sharing and I think, uh, you know, just not, not eating all the chocolate mm. is a good idea, too. Mm? Like, don't eat too much chocolate. Oh, okay. You don't want to sick. Chocolate's pretty tasty. I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. I have a problem. Yeah, let's nah, get some, get some of that sweet, sweet chocolate. And my lesson... For this movie is you should always, no matter what your circumstances are in life, no matter who you are, you should always have a cat. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Everybody Faithful companion wants to have a cat. Faithful companion. Cat's the only cat who knows where it's at. That's all I know. A square with a horn makes you wish you were not born every time he plays. Okay, so uh, what I would wish for is a new bicycle that upgrades itself so that I'm never the uncool person. Oh, dang. What lesson are you going to learn? That bicycles are cool. 
bicycle. I don't know. What, what do you think I could learn? What, what, what is? I gonna... think everybody would be so jealous of you that they wouldn't want to be your friend anymore. That's true. And then you would have to learn that you need friends. I think, and Joel, that, that friends are more important than objects. Right. Well, I'm afraid that your really cool bicycle story is actually the beginning of Pee Wee Herman's great adventure. Oh, that's And true. that's exactly what's going to happen to you. Yeah. You're going to have a Danny Elfman soundtrack going on as uh, you uh, go try to find the basement to the Alamo. I like that part when he's in the di- in the dinosaur with the waitress. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> do you have any dreams, Pee Wee? He's like, yeah, I'm running through a forest. And <laughs> like, I, I don't remember what he said. <laughs> it's like, no, not that kind of dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Pee Wee's Big Adventure. My lesson is you should watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure instead of The Midas Touch. You need a lesson from this movie. Yeah. All right. Yeah, all Joel. Right. My lesson is you shouldn't make fun of fat people, filmmakers, okay? That's not right. And I, I guess that was in the 90s. You know, it was still okay to make fun of fat. When was it ever? Well, yeah. is it okay? You know, yeah. it's not. It's like we we got some real lessons learned here. I think uh, know the difference between a good grandma touch and a bad grandma touch. <laughs> That's my lesson. <laughs> if your grandma no, is excessively no, no, kissing no. you up and down your arms, no. something is wrong. No. Talk to an adult other than your grandma. I mean, that might be like a little kid thing, but you know, like kissing a little kid's arm or something like that. This kid's like in middle school. Well, maybe, maybe but, nice. but maybe grandma's just having some problems. Could her, you know, think about it. One of her, either her son or her daughter died, so maybe she's just having like some, some, some issues there too, man. Like she used to kiss her, her, her. Child. I'm just saying, maybe you know, the death of her, you know, child has mm. driven her to madness. There you go. All right. I was saying, when did she become his parent? Because I was thinking. It may have been more normal when he was a little kid. Well, sure, that's that's like a thing. maybe he was a little kid when he started living with her. Yeah, but he's older now, and it's not appropriate. I'm just saying, watch <laughs> watch out for grannies. <laughs> <laughs> Run away from grandma as quick as possible. Find your punk for friends. Play some hacky sack because it's the '90s. Right, wear your Converse. Be confident. Be courageous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all about. Nugs, grindage, chillin', and, uh... Raggin'. The yeah. Raggin', and the wheat The Leaning Tower of Cheesa. Three C's. Yeah. Converse, courage. The cheese is old <laughs> and moldy. We'll, talk, we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks for listening. Bye. Thanks. Bye. See ya. EarTrumpetAudio.com Ideas and entertainment. Loud and clear. <laughs>